All right, here we go. We're going to do section 8.4, which is trigonometry. Or we just uh, sometimes just say trig, all right, just to make it a little bit shorter. It sounds cooler that way. All right, so uh, what we're going to do is trigonometry just deals with uh, the angles. We're trying to find, like, angles in a triangle, okay? See the tri right there? And... Um, the gone right there is talking about angles in a triangle. The study of angles in a triangle basically is what that word means. Um, for right now, we're just going to just deal with right triangles, just like we've been talking about. So I just happen to have a right triangle right here. And if I could make it a little bit bigger like this. Okay, that's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple things with you. This is a right triangle, so put a little right angle right here. We'll call this A, B, and C. Okay. Up to this point, we've been able to do a couple things. If I said that this was 7 and this is 10, I gave you two sides of a right triangle, you would have been able to find what this uh, missing side was by Pythagorean theorem. So we've dealt with right triangles before. We also dealt with special triangles. We got a 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. If I knew one side on one of those special triangles, I could find the other one. So for instance, if this was this doesn't really look to scale, but that's okay. Let's say that's 30 and this is 60. And this would be the short side if the short side was, I don't know, 5. Look, I know an angle. You know two angles, actually. I know, or at least I know this angle right here. I only know one side. I don't know two sides. But we learn on this special triangle that the hypotenuse is twice as big as the short side. So that would be 10. We also learn that the longer side the longer leg, which would be this one across from the 60, was a square to 3 times the short side, so it would be 5 square to 3. So here's a situation when we only knew an angle and we only knew one side. Okay, We knew all three angles, I could, I could say, but we only knew one side, and uh, you weren't able to do that with Pythagorean Theorem. With Pythagorean Theorem, you're a little bit stuck. You had to know two sides in order to find the third one on uh, with Pythagorean Theorem. But let's say, let's get rid of this trig word right here. Let's say that um, we didn't know that it was a special triangle. It's not 30, 60, 90. It's not 45, 45, 90. Um, I don't know two sides. Um, I only know an angle. It's not a special angle. I don't know. Let's make one up. Let's say it's like 21 degrees. Okay, And I know an angle, and I know one of the sides, and i got to find the other two sides. We would be stuck. We wouldn't be able to do it. But what we're going to show you today is going to allow you to solve for those sides. I could also do this. Watch. Let's say I had a right triangle. I didn't know angle A or angle C, but I did know um, two of the uh, sides. If I just know two of the sides of a right triangle and not know any of these other two angles, except for this being 90, if I didn't know this one or this one, but I knew any of the two sides, it doesn't matter which pair of sides, I could actually solve for the missing angle. If I know one angle, I could always find the other one by taking it away from 90. So what we're going to study right now is going to teach you how to do those things. So I hope you're psyched, hope you're excited about it, and we're going to, um, we're going to learn how to find those missing uh, parts. If this isn't enough for you, because this is like one of these major groundbreaking lessons, and unfortunately I'm not there to teach you face to face, but this should be better than nothing. Um, but if this isn't quite enough, I'm telling you, go to Khan Academy. All right, I'll write it down for you. It's conacademy.org. All right, just do a little search. He's got a search engine right there on his uh, website, and just search for trigonometry. You know, go for the most basic trig, and he'll basically teach you the same exact thing that I'm teaching you now. But sometimes listening to somebody different um, could help. But go back, watch this on YouTube. I'll put all this stuff on YouTube um, if you don't get it quite today. All right, let's go through it. This is pretty cool stuff. I, I enjoy this kind of thing. Let's scooch this down just a little bit, and then we'll be ready to go. All right. I'm going to keep this triangle right here. What we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to give you some words, some crazy words that describe ratios. They describe a ratio of these sides. For instance, let's use this angle right here. We'll get to those words in a second. But um, let's just talk about this angle C right here, angle C. I want to name these three sides. I want to give them specific names um, that relate to angle C. First of all, let's talk about line segment AC. Where is AC? It's opposite the right angle. 
What side on a triangle is always opposite the right angle? We have a big fancy word for it. That's the hypotenuse. Very good. Hopefully you guys answered, at least in your head. All right, so this right here is the hypotenuse. We all knew that. But if I'm talking about this angle right here, um, let's talk about AB, side AB. What is side AB in relation to this angle C? Is it, is it right next to it? Is it the hypotenuse? No, that's the hypotenuse. What is it? It's across from it. We don't say across, though. We say it's opposite. So I would call this side the opposite side. Opposite of what, though? Opposite of this angle. I'm talking about this angle C. Okay, I'm only dealing with angle C right now. So this side is opposite angle C. Well, what about side BC? What is this to this angle right here? All right? Well, it's next to it. It's adjacent to it is the word that we use. Adjacent. It's not a word that teenagers walk around uh, usually saying very often, but if you keep your ears open, you'll hear people saying it, usually adults. Sometimes you hear it on TV. I teach this all the time, so um, I don't know. My ears are specially attuned to hearing people say this. Like I'll hear a commercial or a TV show or something, and somebody will say the word adjacent. And I'm thinking, yep, there it goes. Um, somebody's actually using the word. You guys probably have never used this word before. Um, but it is a word that means next to, like if I had a house and I lived next to my neighbor, I would say we live adjacent to each other, next to. We've actually used this word in geometry earlier in the year. We talked about adjacent angles. So anyway, this side right here, or adjacent sides, this side right here is adjacent to this angle. Some people might look at this and say, well, wait a minute, the hypotenuse is also adjacent to this angle. Yeah, you're right, but we don't call it the adjacent side. Since this is this is a little bit more specific. Since this is opposite the right angle, we call this the hypotenuse. It's always going to be the hypotenuse when it's opposite the right angle. The hypotenuse will never be called the adjacent angle. We'll never call it the opposite, I'm sorry, side. We'll never call it the adjacent side. We'll never call it the opposite side. The hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. This is adjacent to angle C, and this, AB, is, adjacent, or is opposite to angle C. And you say, well, what about this? Let's do this in the same triangle. What if I was talking about angle A? All right, let's just make that a little bit thicker. All right, so what if I was talking about angle A? Would this be adjacent to angle A? Of course not. Look at this side. This is adjacent to angle C, but it's what to angle A? Look, it's across from it, or it's what? Opposite. So I'll put this in a different color so we know which ones go together. So I would consider side BC to be opposite. Opposite of what, though? Opposite of angle A. It's adjacent to angle C, but it's opposite of angle A. Hope that makes sense. I think it does. Look at this side AB right here. What is that? What is side AB to angle A? Well, side AB is adjacent to angle A. So I'm going to write adjacent. All right? Again, it all depends which angle you're talking about. If I'm talking about angle C, this is opposite, this is adjacent. If I'm talking about angle A, this one is opposite, and this one is adjacent. What always is true, though? The hypotenuse is always side AC. Why? Because it's opposite the right angle. Okay, if you keep that straight, the rest of it shouldn't be all that bad. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to give some crazy words. Okay, These weren't the crazy words I was talking about. We're going to give some crazy words that describe the relationship between the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. All right, And um, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Now at first you're going to look at this stuff and say, what in the world is he doing and why is he doing this and how is this going to help us? I promise you, this will have a very, very practical uh, usefulness. Okay, And you will be able to use this stuff to solve for missing sides, missing angles, and that kind of thing. So just bear with us and we'll get there in a second. Okay, before I really get going, I want to introduce you to an angle, all right? See, that sounds weird. But um, this is something that we use in geometry and algebra and trig and calculus and, I mean, just goes on and on in upper-level math. When we talk about an unknown angle, you know how we use X, like, all the time for ge or for algebra? You know, we solve for a missing variable. Do we almost always make it? It seems like we always make it X. Okay, that's kind of universal... Uh, you know, an unknown uh, side or a variable. Okay, we use X all the time. Well, when we talk about trig, when we talk about missing angles, we use this letter, and it's a crazy looking letter, and it's actually not even a letter in our alphabet. This is a letter in the Greek alphabet, and we call this theta, T-H-E-T-A, all right? 
that's the name of it and don't get scared off by it it's just like using an X or an A or a B or a C or something like that but this is just kind of like a universal letter of the Greek again it's in the Greek alphabet it's a universal letter that we use to describe an angle that we don't know so I like to introduce that early so you get familiar with it and it doesn't scare you off at first you might be scared off a little bit but don't be too scared it's not that bad all right, so we'll just call this angle theta. I could have called it angle A, could have called it angle B, angle C, angle Z. It doesn't matter. But I specifically want to call it angle theta because you're going to see that a lot in the future. And I just want you to get used to it. That's all. Okay, let's say we're talking about this angle right here. Now, let's list the sides. This would be the opposite side of angle theta. So I'm just going to shorthand it this time, opposite. This side down the bottom would be adjacent to theta and this right here would be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce you to uh, some new words that you haven't seen before. I don't know, maybe some of you had in Algebra 1. This is not usually something that uh, class covers in Algebra 1, but for some people that might have been a little accelerated, uh, they might have got to this in Algebra 1. So, But for the most part, this is going to be brand new to, to m many of you. All right, So we're going to have some words that we're going to compare two sides. All right? I'm going to compare like this side to this side. And that comparison actually has a word associated with it. Okay, So let's do this. I'm going to compare the, let's say, the opposite side to the adjacent side. Actually, you know what? Let's go in a different order. Let's do this. Let's compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Okay, So if I took, and you're going to say, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to compare? because it's going to help us in the future I promise you in just a matter of a few minutes it's going to help us so if I compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse this is going to be a number this is going to be a number so what I would do is I take this over this so the opposite of the hypotenuse I actually give it a special name I call it the sine function All right, these are all functions is what we call them so if I said the sine of what Dep it all depends on what angle you're using. I'm using this angle down here. What if I use this angle up here? Then this would not be the opposite, would it? This would be adjacent to this angle. But I'm not using this angle. I'm using this one down here. Don't want to get confused. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. This is just a word that represents this particular ratio. So instead of me saying, okay, the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse, instead of saying that all the time, we just say the sine of the angle. By me saying the sine of the angle, you guys should realize that, oh, the sine is a certain ratio. Which one is it? It's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Hope that makes sense. Let's do another one. Let's do another ratio. Let's compare something else to the hypotenuse. Let's compare the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So watch this. I'm going to compare the adjacent to the hypotenuse. That has its own special name. This one is the sine. Actually, I put. it looks like sin. I should have written this the actual word is sine, S-I-N-E, right? but we always shorthand it just three letters and so the first three letters are S-I-N. We don't say sin, right? not because you know sin's a bad thing and we don't want to say the word sin. We just don't. We just say the word sine. So we always say the sine of the angle. Now the next one is called the cosine. Now again, what do we use? The first three letters. So I'm going to abbreviate it C-O-S. The cosine of that angle. So there you go, COS, the cosine of angle theta. That's the actual word, but we always shorthand it like this. We never say cos, we never say cos, we say cosine of the angle. All right, let's do another one. So I've already compared the opposite to the hypotenuse and the adjacent to the hypotenuse. What's the other comparisons that I can make? Well, I can compare these two to each other. I'm going to compare it in a certain order. We call this, actually, let's write it down. Let's compare the opposite to the adjacent side. I, I, we could have compared the adjacent to the opposite, but this particular word is the ratio, right? the comparison of the opposite side to the adjacent side. And we give that a special word. Here's our special word. It's called the tangent. All right, tangent. We use the first three letters to shorthand it a little bit, so we go tan, T-A-N, or tangent. We don't usually say tan. Sometimes we get a little bit you know, we want to say it fast, and sometimes we will say tan, but for the most part, we just say the tangent of the angle. All right, so here we go. Let's box all three of these. These are really, really, really important. We're going to use a 
this a ton really the rest of your math career if you continue with your math um, we're going to be using this forever all through way through calculus and everything else okay so this these are going to be really really important to you and this is the first time that's why I say it's kind of like a groundbreaking uh, time for you all right and you're gonna have to memorize these you're gonna have to memorize that the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is the sine the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse is the cosine and you have to memorize that the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent is considered the tangent and where these words come from I have no clue I don't really care to tell you the truth you can always google it I guess to figure out where those words come from I'm gonna show you a, a nice little easy way to remember the uh, relationships here let's scooch up a little bit and this is just a little mnemonic device to remember um, what these are sometimes you can shorthand it like this the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse the cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent and you say well that really doesn't help me much but if we write it like this and just write it along one line instead of O over H if you do this watch S O H and you write this what do you think C A H and you write this one T O A now it's kind of a nonsense word it doesn't really mean anything on its own it's just a way that we can remember this and a lot of people remember it like this we say so S O H we pronounce it so ka toa or so ka toa so if you can remember that so ka toa in fact a lot of people kinda cram it together alright so if you can remember so katoa you should be able to remember what the relationship is between those particular sides of a right triangle let's go through it the sine was so SOH the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent so that's kind of a neat little way that we could remember it go down the hallway talk to somebody that's in algebra 2 or, or pre-calc or calculus and tell and tap them on the shoulder and say hey what does Sokotoa mean and they should be able to tell you the S is the sine is opposite over hypotenuse C is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse the T is tangent which is opposite over adjacent Sokotoa 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 say it to yourself a bunch of bunch of bunch of times and then it'll stick and you'll be able to remember these things right here okay so that's very important that you remember this all three of these remember those things that's really really important big question is how do you use this stuff why is this useful why am I learning these crazy words why am I relearn learning the relationship between these two sides and giving it a special word like this why am I doing it well I'm so glad you asked you guys are such a great class you're so inquisitive well I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use this stuff and do a couple examples and hopefully it'll make a little sense to you before we actually start solving for stuff this is what they get you to do this is basically just to get you to understand the relationships between these they're gonna ask you um, it says write each ratio as a fraction so um, actually let's let's do this let's write all uh, three trig identities for each of these two angles right here what does that mean it means this let's start with angle Q all right so angle Q. We'll do them in different colors so they stand out a little bit. All right, so angle Q. I want to I want to write out all three ratios. So I want to find the sine of angle Q. I want to find the cosine of angle Q and the tangent of angle Q. What I'm going to do is just I want to put the numbers in. Just write it as a fraction. Now on this particular problem, they say also write it as a decimal to the nearest whatever hundredth. I don't care about the decimals. Okay, I want you to write it as a fraction. That's how I want you to write it. And I'm thinking ahead in the future why I want you to write it like this but let's take a look look at this triangle right here they give you all three sides and here's angle Q let's mark it in purple or pink or whatever that color is and uh, let's find the sine of angle Q I'm not actually finding the angle itself we'll do that in a few minutes okay but I just want to find what the sine is remember what the sine is let's let's do this up here so ka toa so ka toa all right that's what you want to remember and we'll use it as a little visual aid look on a quiz or a test first thing I would write down if you're not used to this I'd write this thing down so Katoa so you can just look at it and you don't have to think about it in your head all the time so let's take a look at this one we're gonna find the sine of angle Q 
Well, the sine is what? It's the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So what's the opposite side of angle Q? That would be 8. What's the hypotenuse? It's 17. Boom, I'm done. 8 over 17. That's the sine of angle Q. Pretty cool. You're still probably wondering, well, who cares? How does that solve for anything? How do I find angle Q if I know that stuff? Well, we'll do that again, like I said, in a few minutes. Let's continue with this, though. We still have to work up to that point. Let's do the cosine. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So here's angle Q. Which one is adjacent to angle Q? Well, that would be 15, right? And which one's the hypotenuse? We already said it before. That would be 17. So the cosine of angle Q would be 15 over 17. All right, let's do one more, the tangent. What's the tangent? Tangent is TOA. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm dealing with angle Q. Which one is opposite? That would be 8. Which one is adjacent? That would be 15. So the tangent of angle Q would be 8 over 15. And there you go. So I found all three trig functions for angle Q. That wasn't bad at all, was it? Let's do all three trig functions for angle P. All right, so let's write it down. So I'm going to do the sine of P, I'm going to do the cosine of P, and I'm going to do the tangent of P. Are they the same exact thing? I don't know. Let's see. Now what am I going to deal with? I'm dealing with this angle right up here. We we'll call this the yellow angle, okay, angle P. So let's do the sine. Remember what the sine was. Is it the same thing, 8 over 17? I don't know. Let's look. It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I'm dealing with angle P this time, what side is opposite angle P? Well, that would be 15. Remember, 8 was the opposite, but it was opposite of angle Q. This 15 is opposite angle P. So sine of angle P is 15 over the hypotenuse, right? Opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse stays the same. That's 17. So this time, the sine is 15 over 17, not 8 over 17, because 15 is opposite angle P. 8 was opposite angle Q. Let's do the cosine. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So again, we're using angle P, this yellow one up here. So the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Which one is adjacent to angle P? That would be the 8. And this would be the hypotenuse again, which would be 17. So I've got 8 over 17. All right, let's do the tangent. The tangent of this. What's the tangent? It's opposite over adjacent. So here's the tangent. Opposite is 15, because that's across from it, over the adjacent, which is 8. So it's 15 over 8. And there you go. Those are our six trig functions for both of these angles, 3 for Q, 3 for P, and those, and we just write them as a fraction. Okay, just keep them as a fraction. I realize that the instructions say write it as a decimal. I'm perfectly fine with you just keeping them as a fraction. And there you go. So you're going to have a chunk of problems that asks you to do that. Really not difficult, really no math involved. It, all the, the only reason they ask you to do these problems is so that you have a basic understanding of which one is the sine, which ratio is the sine, which one is the cosine, which one is the tangent. All right? And you just start memorizing this. After a while, you would, won't even have to write this thing down. You'll just have it you know, in your head. So when I see the sine, automatically without even looking that at that thing, I know it's opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is always this one next to it over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent is the two without the hypotenuse. It's opposite over adjacent. Okay? Let's do one where we, I think the next one, we actually start solving for a, uh, for a variable. Okay, after 23 minutes of talking, uh, we're finally ready to uh, actually use this thing that we've just learned and actually solve for something. Um, we could solve for a couple things if we wanted to. We could have solved for that as well. We could call that Y. You could call this angle, whatever you want to call it. Okay, it doesn't make any difference. They just want you to solve for X. So let's just solve for X and see what we get. Okay, where do we even start with this? Now look at it. It's not a special triangle, is it? It's not 30, 60, 90. It's not 45, 45, 90. Um, it's a 70 degree. I don't really know anything about a 70 degree angle or a triangle with 70 degrees in it. But I do know, look, I do know one of my sides. If you know one angle and only one side, you should be able to find the other two sides, okay, by these things called trig functions. All right, so I'm dealing with this angle right here. Let's forget this one. I'm going to get rid of it, and let's get rid of the Y for right now. We could find it, and we might go ahead and do that, depending on how I feel about it. Um, what we're going to do is just solve for X right now. 
So we got to figure out which of the three trig functions am I going to use the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. That's the first question you have to ask yourself. Okay, and how do I know which ones I'm going to use? Well, let's take a look at this angle and look at the two sides that they give you. They give you this as 15, and you're trying to find. They don't really give this to you. You're trying to find it. But look at the angle that, or the side that they give you, and the side that you're trying to find. Let's see that relationship between, you know, with this angle. So here's the angle. What is 15 to this angle 70? Is it opposite? Is it adjacent? Is it hypotenuse? Well, 15 is adjacent to this 70 degree angle. So so far we have adjacent. Let me just write it down so I remember. Okay. What is the side that we're trying to find? Well, this side is opposite the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. So I've got hypotenuse. Now, which trig function? I'm going to write them down again just so we remember it. You won't have to do this all the time, but at first you probably should. Remember, it's Sokotoa. Okay, so we're going to use this. Which one of these three right here has adjacent and hypotenuse in it? Well, it's this one right there adjacent and hypotenuse so guess which one we're gonna use we're gonna use the cosine so we're gonna take the cosine of the angle All right, it all depends which angle you're using so it's this angle right here so watch what I do this is the cosine of the angle now this time it's an actual number it's not an A or a B or a theta or anything like that or a P or an R whatever letters we used the last time it's an actual number so I'm gonna take the cosine of that number 70 degrees now I haven't talked about this yet, but watch, if you can actually put this in a calculator, and it's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use a calculator for this. I'm going to say the cosine of 70 degrees. Put it in my calculator. It's actually just a decimal number. Try it now. Get your calculator out. Punch that into your calculator. Hit, it depends on what calculator you have. Sometimes some calculators, if you have a TI-30, you would hit 70 first and then hit cosine. If you're using a graphing calculator, you would hit cosine first, then 70, right? It all depends. Make sure you know how to use that. We'll do that in a second, though. So it's the cosine of 70 degrees is equal to what? The adjacent over the hypotenuse. Which side is adjacent? 15. So equals 15 over the hypotenuse, which is x. Now look what we have. We're actually going to do some algebra, and we're going to solve for x. Let's do this real quick. Well, not real quick, but I want to show you how to solve for x. Look where x is, though. This is a little bit of a problem. I could have done an easier one than this, I guess, but... I just went. I just uh, grabbed a problem from the book. So x is on the bottom, though. I don't want x on the bottom. So what am I going to do? I want x to go on top. So how do I get x on the top? Well, I would multiply by an x so they cancel out. Come over here and multiply that by an x. Okay. So uh, let's see what we have now. This cancels out with this, and I've got x times the cosine of 70 equals 15. Look, this cosine of 70, that's just acting as a number. It's just a regular number. I can put that into a calculator and get a regular number. It's just like a 3 or a 7 or a 2 or a 1. Um, it just acts like a regular number. Well, how do I get rid of a regular number if it's being multiplied by x? Sure, I divide. Divide by the cosine of 70. So I come over here and I divide by the cosine of 70. So that cancels out, that cancels out, look what I get. I get x equals 15 divided by the cosine of 70. Now I'm not going to leave it like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a calculator. Give me a second here and I'll punch a calculator up here so you can actually see it on the screen. We'll put some numbers in and show you how to do that. Okay, let's put this in a calculator. Check this out. Watch how fancy this is. Look at that. Aren't you impressed? So here's my graphing calculator. Um, I don't have a um, like a TI-30 on the computer like this, but um, what you would do on a TI-30, instead of hitting cosine first, then 70, what you would do is you'd hit the 70 first, then the cosine. So if you had a TI-30, this is what you would punch in. Watch. You go 15, and then divided by, then you would hit 70, then you would hit cosine, then you hit the equal sign. Try it. 15 divided by 70 cosine equals, and then you should get your answer. All right. Um, on the graphing calculator, there's one thing you want to make sure that um, you're in the right mode. Whoops, it turned off because I wasn't using it. Notice right here, the third line down, it says radian and degree. Make sure that your graphing calculator is in degrees and not radians. This just defaults to radians. All right, but change it to degrees. How do you do that? You click down a couple. That's um, 
flashing right here just move it over to degree hit enter and now it's in degrees so that's what you want to make sure you have it in the TI 30s I think automatically um, default to degrees and you'll even see a little DEG up at the top of your screen to make sure it's in degrees so everybody make sure your calculator is in degrees before you do this we'll use radians at some other point probably not in geometry but maybe later in algebra 2 definitely in trig or definitely in a pre-calc and calc that you're going to use radians right but for right now we're just going to use degrees so here we go this is what this is how we would do it on this calculator I hit 15 I hit divided by and then I actually go in order on the TI 30 you would hit 70 first then cosine on this one you hit cosine first okay and then you hit 70 notice what it did it automatically put a parentheses after the cosine so I always like to close it um, close that parentheses just to make it look real nice there it is 15 divided by the cosine of 70 I hit enter and there is my answer right there so x equals whoops what is it 43 let's round it to one decimal place 0.9 let's say 43.9 so 43.9 what did I just find I found the length of that hypotenuse right there that would be 43.9 and there you go. You actually found one of the lengths of a triangle, one of the sides of a triangle, just knowing one angle and one side. I think that's pretty cool. All right, let's do another one. Okay, we're almost finished. I know I'm going to go a little long on this, but um, we're going to find one more thing. And it says, in this particular example, it says find angle A. So this is a little different. We're actually finding an angle. So watch very carefully. I want to find angle A, which is this angle right there. Well, we do the same thing as what we did before as far as uh, looking at the sides and figuring out what sides we have in comparison to angle A. So if this is angle A, that's what we're trying to solve for. Look at the 6 and the 20. How do they relate to angle A? Well, what is the 6 to angle A? Well, this would be opposite, right? So that would be opposite. What about the 20? What is the 20 to angle A? Well, the 20 is next to it, or in our terminology adjacent so I've got opposite and adjacent which trig function let's write them down again since we're new at this what's the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent not that one not that one this one right here okay so that would be the tangent so we take the tangent of now this time we don't know what the angle is we knew what it was in the other example this time we don't know so I just call it a for angle a the tangent of angle a is equal to the opposite over the adjacent so that would be 6 over 20 okay now this is a little bit weird okay so watch me I'll go you know I'll try to go a little bit slow but you might have to repeat this and maybe look at other sources in fact I actually did the homework on this I did a few problems anyway from tonight's homework assignment so if you want to actually peek ahead and look to see how I did some of these problems you could do that um, on YouTube so let's what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a by itself now this tangent right here it's not a variable that's what I gotta get that through your your mind is um, a lot of students look at this and say oh that's a variable I can divide by the tangent no it's not it's just a word that represents the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side that's all that is I can't divide by it I can't multiply by tangent what I can do is those take the inverse remember um, I don't know did we do this stuff you might have done this in algebra one if you didn't sorry but this is what it is if I had four to the negative first in algebra we learn a rule that um, if it's to the negative first you flip it to the bottom you change the sign of the exponent to be positive so that would be one fourth um, so when I take something to the negative uh, first I'm taking the inverse of it it's called the inverse function so what I'm gonna do here instead of dividing by the tangent I'm gonna take the inverse of it so if I take the inverse of the tangent it actually makes it go away so I've got a if I take the inverse tangent of the left side I also have to take the inverse tangent of the right side this is where that negative one comes into play so I took the inverse tangent here if you wanted to you could you could have done this right so the inverse tangent times the tangent actually cancels each other out okay so if I take the inverse tangent of the left side I also have to take the inverse tangent of the right side and you say what in the world are you doing what is that crazy mess right there well it's a function on our calculator okay I'm gonna bring the calculator up here there it is oops let's scooch this over a little bit 
about right there. Let's bring calculator up again. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so I'm actually going to put this in my calculator. So why in the world did I write it like this? Because look at the calculator. See the see the tangent there? It's hard to see on the screen, but if you look at your actual um, calculator, above it in yellow is tan, T-A-N, to the negative first. That's why I wrote it like this, because it looks like that on your calculator. So that's the inverse tangent of 6 over 20. So watch what I'm going to do. How do you get to the yellow one? You hit second function. Well, first turn it on first, and we'll clear it. I hit second function, tangent. Look at that. Tan to the negative first. Exactly what we have right there, isn't it? And they even give you that first parentheses. So what are you going to put in that parentheses? 6 over 20. Watch, 6 divided by 20. And then I'm going to close up that parentheses. Look, that's all I got to do. There it is. And once I push enter, then I got my answer right there. So it's 16 point what seven? All right. So we'll say uh, click on 16.7. So a is about 16.7. What? What are we finding? Well, we're finding. Oops. Let me scoot this over a little bit more. There we go. What are we finding? We're finding the angle. So that has to be in degrees. So 16.7 degrees. Let's pop this up again. Oops. Not so far. What did we just found, find? We just found that angle right there, and that was 16.7 degrees. And that's how we find the angle. Okay? I'm running out of time, so um, look ahead on the YouTube video if you need to tonight, um, bef even before you do the homework. I do a few problems for you, all right? That might help you out a little bit. And um, you can kind of, uh, and I'm going to have um, Mr. Childs show that video to you in class tomorrow, but. It, it might be a good idea if you're not sure about this to look at it. Go to Khan Academy, watch this thing, look at the book, search online for some other places that teach you about trig. Uh, you'll find a lot of resources on there. Okay, so do your part. Go take a little extra step here since I wasn't in class and I couldn't answer your questions directly, but this should help you out. Okay, um, have fun with that.